This week's podcast is for people like me, uh, people that really want to help people, people that really want to do something to um, lighten the load of others around you, but you find yourself in a position where you're helping someone that does not really want your help. In fact, all they want to do is cause drama, argue, and fuss with you. What do you do? From South Mississippi, I'm Scott Heron, and this is 45 RPM. Galatians 6, 9 says for us not to grow weary in well-doing. It's, it says that we should be active and involved in trying to help those around us. And that is something that as a person who's got an empathetic personality, a gift of mercy from God, that I, I have this drive inside of me to do is to help people around me. But every now and then we get those people that don't want our help. You know, um, we always get the, like today we had a guy that said, hail Satan in a comment. I've, I've had a couple of death threats in the last couple of years. We get people that, that are just generally rude. I can, I can actually be a human and make a comment on social media about having a really hard day and not being able to sleep tonight. And someone always, there's always that one who says, well, if you had more faith, I had a ring that was a, an Indian skull. And I had someone tell me that a real Christian wouldn't wear that kind of thing. You know, those kind of things are always going to be around. We're always going to have to deal with those kind of people. But whenever I'm talking in this case, I'm talking about someone someone in mind in particular. I tried to help this person for, for almost three years. It's been years that I've been really trying to help them. I've answered every question that they've had. They have messaged me before the sun comes up a lot of, a lot of times. On New Year's Day, I got a message from them asking a question at about 2.30 in the morning. And when I didn't answer, they, they're going, hello, hello. So I have to explain that I'm still in the bed, you know? And so, but anyway, that, that's okay. But my, my problem is, is this person I've really tried to help. I've, I've really gone out of my way to try to be extra careful and helpful with this person. I've spent a lot of time over the last couple of years doing that. And it, there, there's a cycle. She'll ask for help. She'll want someone to, to listen to her. She'll get angry about something. She'll blast me. She'll block me. And then she'll come back and act like nothing ever happened. She'll go and complain about me to Pastor Bob or Chris, my friend Chris. She'll come to me and complain about Chris or Pastor Bob. And she's working people against each other, you know? So anyway, recently she, she did the same thing. And I'm telling you, over the course of the last few years, tons and tons of theological questions, even going into sexual areas, which I'm not comfortable with. And I expressed that. She got mad when I said that. Most recently, she started asking questions. You know, whenever you have to be honest, especially about biblical things, sometimes honesty is not easy. Sometimes honesty is not what we want to hear. And whenever I would say those things and she would get mad, I, I knew it's coming. So she's asking questions. I know it's coming. So I told her, I said, okay, you know, for the new year, I had made a decision. It's not a resolution. It's a decision. I am not going to argue anymore. I'm not going to argue anymore. I, I had a meeting with my family, my family, and I told them this is some, I'm setting some boundaries. I'm not arguing anymore. We're going to love each other. We're going to grow together, but I'm not going to fight with you. I'm just not going to. Same with my friends, same with my Facebook acquaintances and, and, and with you guys. I, I want to love you. I want to give you all the help that I can, but I'm not going to fight with you. You know, it's just something that I feel like at my age, which this year I turned 50 years old at my age, I just don't feel like I have to do. I don't feel like I have to be in a place to argue. And how many people have actually come to Jesus and become a follower of Jesus because they lost an argument. So I told this person, I said, you know, I said, I want to set some boundaries. We're going to set some parameters here. I want to help you. I want to talk with you. I want to do whatever I can for you, but I'm not going to, I had two, I had two things that I asked, two simple boundaries. I'm not going to argue with you and I'm not going to entertain you talking to me about my friends. I don't want you to talk to me about how much you're upset with Pastor Bob and how unchristian he is. Um, I don't want you telling me all the things that it goes on and on and on. Of course, when I set those boundaries, she explodes again. See, 
So this time she's telling me, you guys are a cult. Uh, you're cult leader. She's told me that Chris is a cult leader. I'm a cult leader. Bob's, you know, this, all this stuff, just spewing all this kind of stuff, you know, and, and I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. I hope you can hear my voice, how this pains me when I tell you that I have to reach up and I have, have you know, I have to hit the block button. It's very difficult to do because I'm thinking, what if I could say one more thing to help that person? What if I could say one thing to, to encourage that person? And I can't if I hit that button. So I talked with my friend, Chris, I talked with Pastor Bob and I said, what do I do in this situation? Of course, I, I, I warned them. I said, you're going to get nasty emails about me like clockwork. She sends a nasty email to Pastor Bob about how terrible I am, want to know if I'm really serious. And he, bless him. He, he backed me up. He took me up because he knows. I send him screenshots and he knows what we've been through. And you know what her response was? Well, whoop-de-doo. <laughs> so there you go. You know, I, I want to help people. I want to, 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 to spend time discipling people. And that's what these podcasts are for. And I say all of the things that I've said today to bring us to this point. Matthew 10, 42 talks about of uh, being a cup or giving a cup of cool water to someone, cold water, refreshing other people. And I want to be that kind of person. I don't want to be a cup of cold water dumped on someone's fire. I want to be that cup of refreshing cool water. The Holy Spirit speaks for me into the Holy Spirit in you and, and it communicates and, we're, and we are helping each other to grow. That's what water does, right? So that's that being said, Pastor Bob gave me some advice. And then I spoke with Chris. Pastor Bob says, listen, there are so many people that want your encouragement. There are so many people that need your podcast and your help. There are so many people that want to be in tune with what God would have them to do that we could be spending our time with that trust us, that value us, that don't call us names, that don't make fun of us, that that don't go through these cycles that, that do nothing but waste our time where we could be helping someone productively, someone who, who needs it, someone who desperately wants it. And listen, I get so many messages a day. Pastor Bob gets way more than I get and he, he can't keep up. And I'm to the point now that I'm having a hard time keeping up with messages and comments and those things. And I want to be able to spend that time doing quality love and counseling for Christ. And I don't want to spend it wasting my time on someone who's not going to do anything but verbally and emotionally and mentally abuse me as someone that's trying to help them. Listen, folks, if you're trying to help someone and they're, they're receiving that help, that's good. But if it's come to the point that all they're doing is being mentally abusive to you, they're, they're playing games with your mind. They're manipulating you. They're trying to hurt you. They're calling your names. You're trying to share Jesus with them and they're taking what you're sharing of Christ with them and telling you that you're a cult leader and trying to, to find some place that whenever they stick that knife and they twist that knife, it really hurts. And it does. Folks, it does. It hurts. You do not have to waste your time working with those people. You don't. Don't grow weary in well-doing. But we're not spending good quality time, stewards of God's time, if we're wasting our time on someone that's abusive like that. We're just not. And we're not spending good quality time loving other people if all we're doing is enabling these, these other folks to be hurtful, to be, be hateful, and to be abusive. Set yourself free. I want to be like my other friends that can just reach up there and say, okay, this person's not for me. Who now can I minister to? That's what I need to do. And that's what you need to do as well. It's okay to walk away from someone who is doing nothing but trying to hurt you. It's okay. And in this case, that's what was going on. That's what was happening in my life. And it's been happening for a long time. And I'm through with that. And I'm free from that. And now I can spend a lot more time giving people heaven. Mm -hmm.